Hello everyone, a bit of a change of pace this week. I just thought I'd uh, do a little video on another one of my passions, which is Star Trek. I do not own a Star Trek t-shirt. What I want to talk about today is Star Trek Discovery, which is the new series premiering in January. If you don't want any spoilers about this new Star Trek series, including possibly the name, you might want to switch off now. So first of all, a recap of what we know for certain based on what the showrunners have told us. The show is called Star Trek Discovery. It'll be a 13 episode run with a story arc uh, running on the CBS All Access uh, digital distribution network. But for the rest of the world, we'll be getting it on Netflix, which is pretty great for us. Not so great for America and Canada. Sorry guys. We know that it's going to be based on a starship traveling around rather than a uh, space station like Deep Space Nine. Uh, we also know the name of the ship is Discovery and based on a trailer released last week, we've had a look at the ship and its registry is 1031. However, Brian Fuller has come out this week to say that the design isn't finalised, so we might see something different there. The TV series will be set in the Prime Universe, so that's the same universe as all the other Star Trek TV series, as well as the first 10 movies featuring the original series crew and the Next Generation crew. So this is the same universe as Captain Kirk, Captain Picard, Captain Sisko, Captain Janeway and Captain Archer, although some people think Enterprise is a separate universe, but that's not what this video is about. So those are the facts we know. I'd like to engage in a little bit of speculation. So the first thing I'd like to think about is when is this series set? Now I think we can rule out it being set during any of the other series so we're not going to see a series set during Enterprise or during uh, the original series of Star Trek. If we extend that it rules out roughly 2364 through to 2380 which is when the next gen DS9 Voyager era is set as well as those four movies. Brian Fuller has said that this series is not, absolutely not, set between The Undiscovered Country and Star Trek The Next Generation. So that also rules out 2293 to 2364. Now that is kind of disappointing for any fans who were hoping for the much mooted Captain Sulu series that's been talked about for about 20 years. I also don't think the series is going to be set between the Enterprise series and the original Star Trek series. So that's roughly 2162 through to 22. 53 if you stop it at the cage and this isn't any comment of what I think of the quality of Enterprise I quite enjoy Enterprise, but a lot of people it didn't really gel for them a lot of Star Trek fans didn't like it It didn't have massively huge ratings. It wasn't massively popular and of course it was cancelled at the end of its fourth series So I don't think that CBS bringing Star Trek back after 12 years off the air is gonna want to draw any comparison there Similarly, I don't think the series is going to be set before Enterprise and there's a bit of evidence here if we look at the ship itself. So the ship has a registry number 1031. The four digit registries are more commonly associated with the original series and original movies. That's not to say they weren't still in use in the 24th century. We do see some of those ships in Star Trek The Next Generation, but they are less commonly used. Star Trek The Next Generation, DS9, Voyager tend to have five digit registries. The exception of course being the two Enterprises, but the Defiant has a five digit registry, Voyager has a five digit registry, and lots of other ships we see at that time have it as well. Uh, additionally, in terms of four-digit registries, around the time Excelsior comes along, Excelsior of course is the 2000, and most other registries we see after that begin with a 2, not with a 1. If the registries were strictly sequential, the Discovery would have been built before the original Enterprise. But if we look back to the original series, we did see Constitution class starships with their registry starting 10, 1071 being a particular example. But just because I don't think this series is likely to be set during the TOS era or before TOS or even after TOS and before the next generation, I think the ship could still date from there. I think what we might be looking at is a series set post Star Trek Voyager probably about 15 years, so we're looking at the end of the 24th century, beginning of the 25th century, and this has the benefit of allowing actors to appear from other series and to have aged appropriately, if you like. Sort of 15 years in universe, 15 years in the real world as well for the actors, except you know for Patrick Stewart and Jerry Ryan who just never seem to age. That being said, Brian Fuller has pretty much confirmed that the first series will contain no cameos from 
earlier cast members, and I think that's a really good idea for getting started. However, that still begs the question, if we're in the late 24th, early 25th, I'll start referring to the 25th century, it's new, it sounds more exciting. We've been in the 24th century for, what, 21 seasons of television and four movies. I think we can move on to the 25th now. So if we are in the 25th century, why are we using this old ship? And I think if we look at the logo, there could be a bit of a clue there. You notice we have the traditional Starfleet Delta in the background. Now, Another indication that this is set after the original series is that this symbol was only the symbol for the Enterprise in the original series. It didn't become the Starfleet symbol until the 2270s with the Star Trek films. But if we look at it, there is a split down the middle. And I think that split could indicate some kind of problem within the Federation or within Starfleet that means that the Federation has to turn back and use this older technology. We do see, for instance, in episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation, when the Federation are using war games, they use the USS Hathaway, which is an older ship, in a time of crisis when the Borg are approaching. So it's not without precedent, but I think there must have been some major calamity, some possibly split, world splitting away from the Federation, and that may form the backbone of this series, that the Discovery is going out exploring for new allies or possibly to reconnect with old ones. Now, of course, this is just speculation on my part based on a 20 second trailer of a ship and a line down the middle of a logo. But I think it's fun to speculate and I'll be watching in January whether my predictions come true or not. It'd be silly not to. I'm really excited for this new series. I hope you all are as well. And if you agree with what I'm saying, or even if you disagree, please comment below, uh, like and subscribe. I won't be doing a lot of Star Trek videos, but if you like Doctor Who as well, you'll probably see a bit more of those. Uh, but I'm certainly not averse to updating this video if uh, new information comes to light. So please like, share and subscribe. And don't forget, Star Trek is back on television in January 2017, and I'm terribly excited.